1973, Paramount Pictures released a Peter Bogdanovich film called Paper Moon. It was based on a 1971 novel called Addie Prey by Joe David Brown. It takes place in Kansas and Missouri during the Great Depression, and it's filmed entirely in black and white. It stars the real-life father and daughter pairing of Ryan and Tatum O'Neill. Ryan plays Mose, and Tatum plays Addie. The director, Peter Bogdanovich, had cast the little girl, who was a complete acting novice, because he had worked with her father, Ryan, in 1972 in the movie What's Up, Doc? O'Neill had originally thought that this movie might bring a closeness to him that he hadn't experienced with his restless daughter. There was something that had created a troubled relationship with her mother, actress Joanna Moore. You might remember her as Andy Griffith's girlfriend in four episodes of The Andy Griffith Show. The movie was shot entirely in black and white, as I mentioned before, on a budget of about $2.5 million, and it was a huge hit. It earned about $30 million at the box office. But when Tatum O'Neill was nominated for an Oscar for her role and her father wasn't, it created a great amount of tension between the two. In his eyes, he had a deep resentment because his own brilliant performance was completely dismissed. And I have to admit, he does an excellent job in the movie. If you've never seen his role, you're missing something. He does an Oscar-worthy job as Mose. Tatum was 10 years old when she won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, making her the youngest person to ever win an Oscar in a really competitive category. And her performance is Oscar worthy. To think of her age at the time and the way that she's able to fit in in these adult scenarios, she does almost an unbelievable job. Some of the Hollywood insiders really suspected that her performance was manufactured by the director. It's said that he went to great lengths to get the perfect performance from this little girl. Sometimes he would require as many as 50 takes in her scenes. He wanted her shots to seem effortless, and this is what made her performance so critically praised. I don't know how it was done, but it's a remarkable feat to see a young lady like this do such a good job. Bogdanovich did state later on that working with this young actress was one of the most miserable experiences of his life. Orson Welles was once again involved in this film, strictly because he was such a close friend of Peter Bogdanovich. It's an uncredited role of consulting that he did on the cinematography. Welles suggested that they shoot it in black and white, just as he did for the last picture show. And in this film, they used a red filter that added a higher contrast to the images. John Hillerman plays two roles in this film. He plays both the bootlegger and the brother of the bootlegger, the sheriff. And he just had a few weeks in the shooting schedule to lose the weight for the sheriff role that he had deliberately put on in a short time prior to shooting the bootlegger scenes. The director, Bogdanovich, wound up making the film despite his initial resistance to do it mainly because his estranged wife, Polly Platt, felt that he was ideally suited for this material, both on a pictorial level and a narrative level. Bogdanovich, though not married to her at the time, wanted her to serve as the film's production designer, but she refused to do this at first, and that was because of her husband's open affair with Sybil Shepard, who he had directed in The Last Picture Show. Polly Platt decided that she would do the film on one condition, and that was that Sybil Shepard not be allowed to visit the set ever. Various changes were made when they adapted the book to the film. Addie's age was reduced from 12 to 9 to accommodate young Tatum O'Neill. Several events from the book were combined to help out the pacing issues in the film. The location was also changed from the rural South, primarily Alabama, to a Midwestern Kansas and Missouri location. The actress that played Imogene, 
was a 15-year-old Houston, Texas schoolgirl named P.J. Johnson before becoming something of a local movie celebrity in Houston. Following the film's release, Johnson had gone to Dallas and auditioned for the director. Bogdanovich told her that the reason that she got the part was because she told him that he was extremely handsome. Neither the movie nor the book definitively answers the question as to whether Mose is Addie's father. She keeps accusing him, but she doesn't have any proof of it. He keeps denying it. So the audience is really left unsure. Roger Ebert, somebody I rarely agree with on his critique of movies, gave this movie four stars, and he makes the statement that it's about two con artists, but not really about their con. But Bogdanovich takes the con games only as an experience which his two lead characters share which draws them together in a way that's terribly funny sometimes, that's very poignant and, finally, deeply touching. Bogdanovich says that the long, one-take sequence where Addie and Mose fight in the car about running out of Bibles took two days to shoot and 39 takes to get right. It was shot on a one-mile stretch of road just before it hit a very modern portion of the town. So every time they flubbed a line, they would have to turn everything around and drive back and reshoot. If you watch that scene closely, you can detect some looping that was done because of the numerous takes. As I mentioned earlier, Tatum is the daughter of Ryan O'Neill and Joanna Moore. She was born in the Westwood area of Los Angeles. Her parents divorced in 1967 and her mother died from lung cancer at the age of 63. This family has had its troubles. The dysfunction here was paramount. You combine that with being a star at such a young age, and you're just asking for trouble. One of Tatum's first boyfriends was the pop star Michael Jackson. She dated him in the late 70s, and Michael Jackson thought of her as his true first love. Then she got into a relationship with tennis player John McEnroe. That began in 1984 when she moved into his Central Park West apartment in New York City. They ended up getting married in 1986. They had three children from the relationship, but they ended up separating in 1992 and finally divorcing in 94. After that divorce, her drug problems that had plagued her early in her life re-emerged. She went on to bigger and better drugs. She got addicted to heroin. As a result of this, McEnroe got custody of the children in 1998. In 2008, O'Neill was arrested for buying crack cocaine near her Manhattan apartment building. She was found in possession of two bags of drugs. This led to her being charged with criminal possession of a controlled substance. She ended up pleading guilty to disorderly conduct in connection with this arrest and agreed to spend some time in a drug treatment program. By all accounts right now, I think she's gotten her life straightened out, which is always a great thing to see happen to these stars that get on a wayward path. I think her relationship with her father has been somewhat repaired and they're beginning to act more like the normal family unit. If you've never experienced this movie, Take the time to watch it. I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. The direction is sharp. The dialogue is quick and funny. And it's one of those movies that's over before you're done watching it. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll continue to chase the classics.